Today, Illustrative DNA launched their update and I wanted to share my results and I encourage you to upload your raw DNA or provide or you can provide them your global 25 coordinates and you can see the results for yourself but um, overall I'd say I'm pretty impressed by this update it's a lot more interactive and it's going to be updating in uh, as um, in real time as new samples are added from different genetic studies modern and ancient samples they're going to update your results so I think that's a pretty cool thing that uh, it's going to be updated sort of automatically you're not going to really notice it and um, so you're going to want to keep checking the site to uh, see you know how your results change because uh, my experience is that your results can sometimes change dramatically depending on the population references and when there's a new study that it is maybe a lot closer to you than the existing samples your results your admixture percentage for your autosomal DNA and um, your close populations etc are going to change so this is the uh, the sort of the the home page area um, the ancestry breakdown that's going to show up when you log into the site uh, also uh, if you already uploaded your DNA or provided illustrated DNA with your global 25 coordinates um, you will not have to re-upload or uh, provide them with your G25 coordinates again it will automatically update the one thing you do need to do is reset your password in order to access the site post update um, so I they have uh, they I you um, I gave them my ancestry kit and also my nebula kit as well but I'm just going to show you the results for my ancestry kit but my results of my nebula kit were uh, a bit different so it just goes to show you also that you can get different results based on what uh, the, the test that you took, whether it's Ancestry, 23andMe, Nebula, etc. Um, so just keep that in mind too. This is definitely not an exact science. It's more for fun. And uh, we, we should all just be kind of having fun with this and not taking it too seriously or too literally. Uh, but there is certainly some, um, you know, it can certainly point you in the right direction in terms of your in your generalized ancestry and I'm um, uh, Ashkenazi uh, Eastern European Ash Ashkenazi Jewish and um, so it it it, uh, it caught that as terms of my closest population so uh, again I'm, I'm showing you the results of my ancestry kit and you can choose the uh, for your admixture percentages for the ancient ancestry breakdown you can choose different regions and it automatically, you know, gave me Europe Jewish. Uh, and then you have two choices, Ashkenazi Jew or Sephardic Jew. And let's go with Ashkenazi Jew because that's what I am. And I got a good fit here at 1.504. And then it shows you the map here uh, of the different regions that uh, represent the admixture percentages. Um, which is pretty cool. And then it has the breakdown here. And you also can toggle it between this mode and simplified mode so I don't know let's take a look at simplified mode and as you can see the Canaanite there um, 31 percent uh, now when I do use my nebula kit it's like 41 or 42 percent so you know again uh, depending on uh, the coordinates you give them or the kit or the um, raw DNA file that you give them you can get different results so um, don't take it too literally and then uh, Canaanite, and then uh, uh, beneath that, uh, Hel Hellenic at 22.4%, Continental Celtic 13.8%, Germanic 11.4%, Slavic 11%, Northwest African 7%, and Anatolian 3.4%. And then they go into that Q&A, which is kind of interesting to give you a graph here, explaining what the ancestry breakdown is, uh, what's the fit, close populations, PCI, PCA plot, mixed mode, and I'm going to show you those right now. And so click on Ancestry Breakdown. You can go to Closest Modern Populations. And you can toggle it between 10 and 50. It automatically, uh, the default is 30. And so it's loading here. And they got a cool map there. Um, show you uh, your closest populations. And here's the list view. Obviously Ashkenazi 
uh, Eastern Ashkenazi populations are going to be my closest. And then the closest non-Ashkenazi population is Maltese, Sicilian East, Italian Apulia, Italian Campania. There's Ashkenazi Jew Germany, Sicilian West, Italian Calabria, Italian Bessalacata, Abruzzo, Greek Crete, Italian Melis, Italian Jew, Greek Peloponnese, Italian Marsh, Italian Lazio, Italian Umbria, Sephardic Jew, Greek Thessaly, Greek Dodecanese, Romaniot Jew, Italian Tuscany, Greek Central Macedonia, Albanian, Moroccan Jew, and Italian Piedmont. And let's take a look at the ancient samples. And closest uh, is uh, South Italian Viking Age um, from a study, recent study. Uh, then you have Roman Late Antiquity individual, Roman Late Antiquity, Roman Late Antiquity, Thracian, 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 Crimean, Greek, Mycenaean, Punic, Ibiza, Thracian, Thracian, Anatolian Roman period, Anatolian Hittite period, Hittite period, Anatolian Greek, Anatolian Roman period, Greek and Porus, Anatolian Roman period, Anatolian Roman period, Anatolian Roman period, Greek Mycenaean, Liburnian, Iberia Visigothic period, Morisco, Iberia, Iberia Middle Ages, Thracian Gite, Greek and Perse, Iberia Middle Ages, Anatolian Roman period, and Almohad Muslim Iberia at a distance of 7.303. And let's just take a quicker look, a quick look at South Italian Viking Age. Um, again, the site's name is Illustrated DNA. And they do they do a great they do a great job at illustrating the results, and there's a South Italian individual from the Viking Age. And then they go into a little bit uh, explanation of that age in southern Italy, and you can see the date there. It's a f uh, female. You see they have the empty DNA location Foggia, Italy, and you can have a link to you can link to the um, the link to the research article. And let's see. And then the PCA plot, which I think is uh, probably the coolest addition here, um, doesn't show up that great in um, mobile applications um, in mo on your smartphone device. It's um, a little more clear when you either enter desktop mode on your mobile device or when you use the laptop or uh, your PC. But uh, you can see here, this is um, Europe South Ancient and Modern PCA. And... I'm just going to zoom in here and then pan and show you kind of where I am here. And you can see generally close to the Greek Creek, Greek Peloponnese, Ashkenazi Jew, of course, Italian and Italian results there. So I'll go scroll in there a little further. See my closest individual populations. There I am. And there's a Greek Crete individual very close to me. Ashkenazi, Ukrainian, Ashkenazi, Lithuanian, Ashkenazi, Ukrainian, Greek Peloponnese, Greek Crete, Italian Campania, Italian Basilicata. So you get the idea. Okay, anyway, it's fun to play around with that PCA plot. And then uh, lastly, I'm just going to show you the mix mode. Um, and here's the two-way I get, Thracian and 74.8%, uh, Egyptian late period, 25.2%. And you can scroll down and see the results there. Uh, there's one, uh, Phoenician Ac Ac Achaemenid period, SFI 36 individual, 63.2%, and Scandinavian Viking Age, VK 316 individual, 36.8%. So those are the some of the ancient samples there. And I'll show you the modern modern populations. There's the two-way. Ashkenazi Ukraine and uh, Surya, which is an indigenous Brazilian population. 
um, get a trace result of that. And uh, you can see the fit there, 1.593, pretty good fit. And scrolling down here. And yeah, oh yeah, and then they show the three-way, which is a good fit there, 1.415. Sephardic Jew, 71.8%. Serbian, 26.7%. Yukba, 1.5%. So, yeah. So that's just a little preview. Well, I just wanted to show you my results. And again, I encourage you. Oh, yeah, you can toggle it from uh, light, uh, light mode to dark mode as well. That's another cool feature. Anyway, encourage, again, I encourage you to explore. Check it out. And uh, thanks for watching.